Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. So in this episode, we're going to have a deep look at automation inside Cubase's here. Now, I want to begin by adding that audio unit automation is only available when using the app on an iDevice that is running iOS 10 or higher. Now, there are some great user cases for audio unit automation. And one of the things I like doing is making a reverb swell towards the end of a song, kind of making it feel as if the music is getting more distant. Or how about loading up a pure white noise audio file and then sweeping a high resonance filter over it to create a wind sound? Yes, the possibilities are endless when it comes to audio unit automation. Okay, so let's clarify something first. There is other forms of automation inside Cubasis, like the MIDI one. Let's open up this little bar I've got here with some MIDI notes in it. Now, if we look down here, we can see some CC numbers and that's basically what it's for, MIDI CC automation. So if you've got a MIDI controller connected to Cubasis and you're controlling something and you're recording it, then here's where that type of automation will turn up. And this is not where we will find the type of automation we're going for in this episode. Knowing what not to look for is just as important as knowing what to look for. Now, the next thing we're gonna have a look at is the internal automation. You know, Cubasis already have a system in place for automating stuff like volume faders inside the mixers, panning knobs, stuff like that, but also all of the built-in effects that you can load inside Cubasis can also be automated. And we can see a list of all of the available items for automation if we go to a track pop up the automation menu, press open editor, and then have a look up here where it says track one volume right now. Well, this can be switched out to all of these items here. And this is so neatly tied to the native stuff inside Cubasis that if we, for instance, load something into the insert effect slot here, then all of the controls for that item will end up in that list too. Now, and this is important, so listen carefully now. If you load an audio unit effect or an instrument and then go to the automation menu here, open the editor, you won't find the controls. In fact, you actually have to record some automation first in order for a control to pop up in this list. And that's what we're gonna have a look at next, how to actually record some audio unit, audio unit, uni? audio unit automation. Right, so the way that we record audio unit automation is the same way that we record the internal native automation of other stuff like faders and things like that. So first we need to locate the controls for initializing and also ending such a session. Now these two buttons can be found on the mixer channel strips right here and you will also find them placed above plugins, like right here over the Cubasis compressor, or like here over Mersen by Icegear. Now these functions are called read and write. The reading one will read any automation that you've recorded, and the write function is the one you activate when you want to record automation. So let's do a little bit of automation. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to use Mersan here and what we're going to do exactly is automate the reverb dry wet knob, slowly increasing it from dry to wet until it's all maxed out. 
Next, we need to activate the write button. Now this will automatically also activate the reading button. And now we just have to press play. Yes, you don't even have to press the main recording button inside Cubasis. Just press play and tweak away. Now, if you for some reason do not want Cubasis to listen to that automation you just wrote, then you just deactivate the reading function and it will no longer see the automation. The recorded data will still be there, but it just won't read it. Another thing to point out is that if you do anything wrong during your automation recording session, then the simplest way to redo it is simply by redoing it. So just use the undo function up here and then re-record whatever it is that you wanted to automate. Now, when you're done with all of that and you have something, but you want to just change it up a little bit, well, then there's a lot of edits that you can do to that recorded data. By the way, where is that data anyway? As you can see, we've got no real track information here. No notes, no nothing. Still, we're recording automation. I'm mentioning this because I want you to understand how this is different from media automation. You see, with MIDI automation, it all ends up inside the same box with all of the MIDI notes, uh, the piano roll, all of that. And so if you remove such a box, then you're also effectively removing all the notes, all the data, including the MIDI CC automation. That doesn't happen here because it's a separate system. I'm mentioning this because I've been receiving questions about this. So I hope I've been able to uh, clarify this well enough. Okay, so let's open up the automation view so we can edit the data. You can press the button with this little symbol on it placed above the plugins. You can also find that same button inside the mixer view in the global control. Or make sure that you've got the channel selected where you've recorded the data. Open up the automation menu and then press this button with the E on it for edit. So here on the left, we can find all of the various tools we can use to edit the data. The select tool will allow you to select a number of automation nodes and the draw tool will allow you to draw nodes. Now the erase will do exactly that, erase stuff you've got selected and the reset all will just reset the entire lane, removing everything. Now, if we did hit that by mistake, then all we have to do is to press undo and we're back to where we started. Now, the reduce button will reduce the amount of nodes. So if we use the select tool to select a number of nodes here, press the reduce, we can see how it reduces the number of nodes. Next, we have two moving options. So if we use the select tools to select a number of nodes, then by pressing and holding down the one with the arrows going up and down, we can move the nodes up and down, but not sideways. Now holding down the next option with the sideways arrows will allow us to move the nodes sideways, but not up or down. Very useful tools when you're moving stuff around in this window. And those are the editing tools you have. Now if there are several controlling elements that you've automated, then you can switch out which one you're editing in this window with this menu up here, where we can also find all of the native Cubasis stuff. And again, I want to clarify that with audio unit automation, in order for any item that you want to edit or control automate to pop up in this list, you have to record stuff and then those controllers that you've recorded will pop up in this list. However, with the native Cubasis stuff, you can actually go into this window and start editing them by hand, or maybe I should say finger, finger in our case, yeah. You can start editing them from the beginning. You don't even have to pre-record anything as long as you use using Cubase's native stuff, you can just pop open this window, choose a controller and start drawing away.
The last thing I want to mention is the read and write buttons down here and also this one with the peculiar symbol. Well, that my mobile musicians friends, that is the exit button. However, I just want to add that do not under any circumstances press this button during Tuesdays or Sundays after 6.15 because if you do, you will delete the internet. I've even asked Steinberg about this. They, they replied to me saying stuff like, are you really Jacob? We don't understand. Hey, Jacob, stop it. Well, there you go. That's audio unit automation inside Cubasis. Now, I want to highlight something here. Uh, if you haven't heard the interview that Afro DJ Mac USA did with Tim Webb from Discord, one of the most popular iOS musician blogs out there. He's been doing this for ages. And by the way, Afro DJ Mac USA has been doing what he's been doing for ages too. And so I do suggest that you go and listen to that interview. So go check it out. Link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. Don't forget to, to leave a like if you like this video, if you feel that you were helped by this video. Video. Uh, <clears throat> so, if you want to help in securing the future for this channel, then why not support me on Patreon like many of my awesome patrons have already done? Yes, broken English is my forte. And now, if you don't want to do that, I've got a PayPal me link so you can do a one off donation if you'd rather do that. If you don't want to do that, then you can buy some of my music off my Bandcamp. I am working on the uh, my latest track uh, on my Mellow album. Um, it's, um, I'm almost, I'm near complete but you know I dare I don't dare to say it's it's really finished because I've noticed that whenever I sit down and master things you know it can take longer than the few days that I'm hoping for so last time I, I, I thought it would take me about like four or five days it took a month or whatever yeah but it's it's gonna come sooner than later so go check out my band camp if you want and if you find any music you like why not buy a track or two yeah and uh, also don't forget to leave a like because that really helps with the ratings around here on YouTube and if you subscribe don't forget to press in that little bell thing so you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video. Right as usual I wish you a very productive week now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.